YouTube, Dawson Writer here. Welcome to my review for King Oger episode 37? 38? It's in the 30s. So, this is how I start off most of my King Oger reviews, but another great episode, and I was really happy with this one. I think it might be my favorite of the Kingdom-focused ones so far. I mentioned in last week's video and a couple previous reviews that I'm really looking for a reason to like the Black Ranger more because he's been my least favorite in a lot of ways. He has had moments where I've come around to him, but I feel like I'm the least invested in him. And I'm not saying that after the, this episode he's my favorite, but I definitely like him a lot more, and I think it was a really strong episode for him, and I have very few nitpicks about this. Like, each episode so far for the Kingdoms has been focusing on one of the retainers, and it kind of fleshes out the backstory of both the Ranger and the retainer, but his retainer is this, what are they called? I don't know what they're called. I feel like I know the word in my head uh, for the, the little masked guys. Um, I want to say they're, I don't want, I don't know what they are, it's, uh, but they, he's like a masked dude that's like no personality. So I'm like, I wonder how they're going to do that. It didn't seem like they're going to do anything with it from the preview. There's a small part of me that's disappointed that we didn't end up getting some huge backstory or almost a comedic like character focus on this character that's silent. But they went in a different direction where you have Grody actually resurrected the previous ruler uh, to be sort of the antagonist of this episode. But it led to the backstory of uh, Kaguragi and how he got to be the way that he is. And I really like how they did it, because in any other Toku series, hell, any other series, this just would have been a backstory about the whole, about how the old leader was corrupt, and he had to save them from it, or whatever. And it kind of plays that angle up at the beginning, like, she seems a little smarmy, like, when she recruits him, when she says, like, oh, I want you on my team because, like, you're, you know, too honest to betray me. And the way she played it almost came across, like, pfft. You're too dumb and, like, honest that I can just manipulate and want you around. But it was more like, no, I just want a trusted person around. And then also later, like, when we get the reveal that she seemingly lost her way and was hoarding all the food and willing to just die with it, like, it kind of just frames this thing as, like, she did lose her way, whether she was corrupt or from the beginning or just slowly became corrupt. But you find out that wasn't the case. But like I said, in any other series, she totally would have been just a generic previous corrupt leader. And in this case, what actually happened was... It was Grody during the uh, Fury of the Gods time that had poisoned the food. And she realized it and was keeping the food away and then burning it to save the citizens, even if, like, she was remembered horribly, if she took the hit for the reputation, you know. She doesn't mind being the bad guy. If you're going to be bad, be bad with purpose. Shout out if you get that reference. But that is kind of what led to Kagaragi being the way that he is. We get to see him a little bit before, like, we met him, when he was actually just a humble farmer that wanted to help people. And we see that, like, the reason he's like this is because he realized, as he always says, you got to get your hands dirty, that in order to protect people and to do what's right, sometimes you got to get your hands dirty, and you got to maybe not look so great, you know, on your reputation. You might look, look like a bad guy to people, but at least you're keeping your people safe. And obviously, we knew that about his motivations, but I felt this episode really got me to believe in him more as a character in regards to him, that being his motivation, because my main problem with him, for the most part, is while he was clearly stating, I don't mind getting my hands dirty for my kingdom, the way he played it and that was acted and performed and written or whatever came off like a bit. It came off like a cartoon, like there he's stating it, but it never came across as like, oh, I understand why he's doing this. It just came across like, like I said, like a toku bit. And not to mention, there was times, obviously, where he would help out Gear or help out somebody or not help out someone. And it was always framed as that kind of, like, cartoony rogue character you have around that might betray you, but you still kind of like him. So that had me having a hard time investing in him. And I'm sure he'll still have bits of that performance. But the fact that this episode actually got me to understand why he's like that and truly actually believe in him on a heroic level that he's willing to take a hit to his reputation to protect people now makes me like him a lot more. And it clears up a lot of that like presentation of it being overly cartoony. Now, involved in this storyline, as mentioned, we find out Grody was the one that poisoned the kingdom in the past, and part of the way you find that out is the other characters are hungry because the food supply have been cut off from tofu, which makes sense, and they're so hungry they can't even fight, and there's kind of like, it's kind of like a B-plot that winds up tying into the A-plot, and they play it mostly for laughs, but it leads to the scene where Grody's offering them rice, and then Himeno's like, no, I smell the poison, and that's how they're like, oh, you know, and it connects it to the poisoning and finding out about the poisoning of the past. And just as a side tangent note, it was really, the editing in this was really weird. Sometimes the way they did the flashbacks was awkward. Like, not that I didn't know what was happening because it was a very distinct, like, this is the past, this is the present. But, like, when they transitioned, it didn't make sense. I'm like, I wish this was more clear cut. But there was a couple times, like, during that reveal when they tied together the flashbacks to the present day reveal to the poisoning reveal for the other characters. It was 
well edited. So I'm like, I wish this would have been, it's like a small nitpick. It just, there was a couple times where I'm like, this feels choppy. But then that was like really well done. And I like the way that tied together. My only very small nitpick is obviously Himeno had to be the one to like literally sniff out the poison for the other characters. But I hated that she got involved in the comedic bit with like, oh, I'm so hungry, I'm falling over, I have to take food from Grody. Because Grody obviously like killed her parents, and I feel like that's just such a much more serious antagonist for her to get involved in a comedic bit. Again, it's a very small like nitpick. It just bothered me that like we cut to the scene and they're like making like Toku annoying faces like, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, why is she involved in this comedic bit with this character that killed her family? I feel like it would have been just again, the smallest of nitpicks. It just doesn't hold back the episode. But it would have been better if like he offered them food and she's like, no way, you killed my family. And then you're watching Gira and um, Jeremy ham it up. And then before they eat, she stops them instead of them all about to eat and her involved in it. Again, very small nitpick. We then have the final battle, which I felt had so much more impact with Kaguragi after getting his backstory. And again, I state this in almost every review, every review, but the cinematography and just kind of the epic feel of the King Odra fights always looks good, but it's especially great in moments like this where it feels more impactful. And he does defeat him, but um, I'm, I'm probably stupid about this, but I can't imagine he's dead. I cannot remember if there was something about Grody's character that he couldn't die or whatever or has to be killed in a special way because like undead, he could probably just resurrect himself like the Necromancer. But, uh, yeah, I can't imagine they would let him kill him off because, again, he's got kind of story stakes with both Rita and primarily Himeno, so I can't imagine his character is done in this fashion. So at the beginning of the episode, Rita is with Kagaragi, and they go to fight um, the Grody, and they get, like, poofed away. Like, he snaps them away, and I've, I think that they're going to end up in their kingdom or whatever for their next episode, but I wanted to note that. I'm like, oh, yeah, what happened to Rita? Because I thought they were just going to get displaced and appear in the episode later, but they didn't. But... Yeah, a great episode. I really like this one. My only pet peeve was kind of just about the comedic stuff, roping Himeno into it, but otherwise, it was a great focus that got me to appreciate Kagaragi's character even more, which I appreciated. I'm sure he'll still annoy me down the road with it being a bit. It just is weird because it wasn't like I didn't understand what he his bit, what his motivation was because he states it almost every episode. It was just done in such a cartoonish manner that I couldn't get behind him. Like, at the beginning of the series, I was worried about Himeno being kind of a cartoonish princess, but they balanced that nicely by getting me to understand who she was as a person. So I feel like finally, 30 episodes in, I understand him a bit more, and I'm really grateful to that, and I'm really enjoying this arc. But what did you guys think of this episode? Let me know in the comments. As always, until next time, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell. See you notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.